Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Slackwood Church, whether you're here with us in the sanctuary or joining us online, we're pleased that you're here. We welcome back this morning the Reverend Janet McGregor Williams, who is a member of the Presbytery of the Coastlands and a neighbor of ours here in Lawrence Township. Today is the second Sunday of Lent, and it is also Arlene Filson's birthday. So Arlene, if you are joining us online, know that you are wished a happy birthday and lots of love from your Slackwood congregation. Uh, there are a number of announcements in your bulletin. I trust you can read them. I will point out two things. Many of you probably know that Fred Rogers, who was Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, was a Presbyterian minister and a member of the Presbytery of Pittsburgh. He was ordained to children's ministry. And the Presbyterian Church now makes March 20th Mr. Rogers' Day. And you're encouraged to do something for your neighborhood. What we are doing this year is a collection of non-perishable food items. You see some of them up here that will go to the food pantry at the Slackwood Elementary School. So we encourage you to be generous in that giving. Also, please note the uh, collections of the offerings that are being done at um, St. George Ukrainian Orthodox Church for the people of Ukraine. There's a table out in Fellowship Hall, has a sign that says Ukraine. You can leave items there and we will get them delivered for you. Are there other announcements that should be made? Mark. Our church has had a very long tradition of having uh, Easter breakfast, uh, obviously the morning of Easter. So the Christian Ed Committee has decided this year we want to resume with having the breakfast. So I just wanted to notify you that that is the plan. We will, um, the morning of, of, of Easter, uh, have our traditional uh, breakfast. We will take all the safeguards and precautions. Uh, We'll have bagels, but we'll probably do things just a little bit differently just to ensure that everyone feels safe uh, about uh, the manner in which we'll, we'll serve the food and things like that. So just to uh, uh, put that out there so you can plan to be a part of that. And the other part of that is that we always have a tradition with the kids to have an Easter egg hunt. So it'll be important for us to, to if, you, if you think that you will be uh, planning to attend, uh, we have a sign-up list that will be out in Fellowship Hall. We'll be mentioning this the next couple of Sundays, but uh, we just want to have an idea of how many people uh, will, will plan to attend because we're actually going to have, have it outdoors. So it'll just help us in our planning to, to know how many people should anticipate. Um, so that's for, for the Easter breakfast. The other thing I want to mention, the adult forum will be starting a new book in two weeks. It's a C.S. Lewis book called The Great Divorce. So, uh, uh, I would encourage uh, if you would be interested in participating in the adult forum, we, we meet in a Zoom meeting. So um, I will be uh, purchasing the books this week. So if you could uh, catch up with me after service today and let me know if you might have an interest in that, I can get a, get a good count for, for how many books I need to work. So, okay, thank you. Okay, so let Mark know if you plan to attend the adult forum so he can order a book for you and put the Easter morning breakfast and egg hunt on your calendar and also sign up on the sign-up sheet. Other announcements, Kate. It is also Doug Moore's birthday today. It is. Uh, Debbie and Doug's son, Jamie Moore's birthday today. Okay, so Doug Moore and Jamie. And Jamie's birthdays today. Excellent. Scott, you wanted something? Yes, um, I just wanted to uh, give you guys an update. Um, I was supposed to have my CT scan on my head on March 4th, but it got pushed back to Tuesday, March 15th, due to overbooking. But um, for those of you who don't know, uh, my doctor ordered a CT scan on my head because he did notice a lump and swelling on the back of my head. So please keep me in your prayers. and. Um, my head results, my CT scan again, it's uh, Tuesday the 15th at 3 o'clock at the Capital Health Center in Hamilton. So um, as soon as I find those results, I'll forward them to you guys. Okay, thank you, Scott. So keep Scott in your prayers as he anticipates the CT scan and after it happens. Other announcements? Let us worship God.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship printed in your bulletin. As God became human in Jesus, he walked in our midst. Jesus proclaimed the word of God. Let us listen for God's voice to speak to us. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God of light and truth, you are beyond our grasp or conceiving. Before the brightness of your presence, the angels veil their faces. With lowly reverence and adoring love, we claim your glory and sing your praise. For you have shown us your truth and love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Let us pray, first in unison and then in silence. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. You have spoken the truth to us, and yet we ignored you. Forgive us, God of grace. Open our ears anew that we may hear your word and be transformed by it.
Our assurance of pardon is in Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equity with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and becoming obedient unto his death on a cross. Through his obedience, we are freed from whatever bondage enslaves us. Amen. Indeed, as we hear God's word, we pray that God would listen to his children praying. 
that God would be present here with us in grace and power and love. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 62. Listen to the word of God. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From God comes my salvation. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning, a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone my soul waits in silence. For my hope is from God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balance, they go up. They are together lighter than a breath, but no confidence in exhortation, and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this. The power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to, the Lord, to you, O Lord. For you repay to all according to their work. Our second scripture lesson comes from John's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. Very truly, I tell you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life for himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not be astonished at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and will come out, and those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. This is the word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, come as the fire and burn, come as the wind and cleanse, come as the light and reveal, come as the water and refresh. Holy God, convict us, convert us, and consecrate us until we are fully yours. Amen. It is good to be back with you. I was here a month ago, exactly. That's the joy of February and March, is their days are the same. Last time I was here, we talked about the sense of sight as we explored where we see God. And I noticed you've got all those hearts that we decorated the pulpit with on a bulletin board out in your fellowship center as, as we talked about where we see God. Today, I want to focus on another sense, that of hearing, as we take time to listen to God. Each morning, I make it a discipline that I go for a walk. And when I go for my walk, if I'm not walking with somebody, I've got my earbuds in. I'm listening to something. And it raises that familiar question, what are you listening to? Or what's on your playlist? For some, it is their favorite music, 
that they listen to, particularly ones with a fast beat to keep them moving. For others, it is an audio book that they have to keep coming back to, or maybe a podcast. For me, it is either an audio book or a podcast, and I often find that podcasts are a great place for sermon illustrations, and you'll hear one today. So the question is, what are you listening to? Scripture also asks this question. Jesus talks about how the sheep know his voice. They recognize it and they hear it. And today's reading, we are told that when we listen to the voice, we discover the words of life. The world is filled with sound everywhere we go, whether it is the hustle and bustle of the city or the tweet of birds and the hum of insects in the wilderness. I have to say, this summer was particularly hard with the noise of the cicadas. My husband loves them. I do not. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but they were loud. They were so loud. We often call this background noise white noise. It is easy to become used to the background noise and filter it out. Filtering is that ability to separate out what parts of things are important. What are we listening to? We filter out all of the distracting noise. We filter out our water to get the, rid of the impurities. We prioritize the projects at work to know what we have to start with what is the most important project. I have to confess, though, I'm not very good at filtering out noise. I have this need to listen to part of what is in the background. So when I go to visit people at the hospital, I used to have to say, do you mind if I mute your TV? Because I can't turn it off. My husband loves the background noise. I don't. But then, once again, I find that the best sermons are the ones that preach to me as well as to all of you. So know that I'm listening to this sermon as well. Once you know what you're listening to, it acts like a filter, sorting out all of those extraneous noises in our life. To set up a good filter, you must know what it is you want to focus on. Jesus suggests that we focus on his voice. When we focus on Jesus and make listening to him a priority, then it filters out all of the other voices that are around us. There are many ways that we can learn to filter out the extraneous noise of the world from Jesus' voice, to focus on that voice. One of them is right now. Whether you are attending church with us online or in person, attending church regularly is a way to recognize Jesus' voice and to filter out all of those other voices. To private prayer, times of devotional, or studying the scriptures with others, to opening our eyes to see what God is doing in our midst, as we saw last time. Jesus' ministry reverberates with sounds that beckon people towards life and safety. As we come, we are the sheep who recognize the timber of his voice as the familiar voice of our shepherd, the good shepherd. Discipleship involves learning to find that familiarity in God's words so we respond rightly. So here's my podcast illustration. Evelyn Glennie was a, is a percussionist from Scotland who is profoundly deaf. She applied to study at the Royal Academy of Music, and they turned her down, wondering how somebody who was profoundly deaf could want to study at the Royal Academy of Music. But she refused to give up. She told them that she had learned to listen, not only with her ears, but with her hands, her feet. She plays the drums barefoot so that she can feel the vibrations of the stage. She feels it with her whole body as the music vibrations move through her body. Can we listen to God 
with our ears, our hands, our feet, our bodies, our hearts. Imagine what it would be like to have the vibrations of God moving through your body. Today, I want to explore aspects of how we listen to God. The first one is silence. This means taking time to take the earbuds out, to find a quiet place, shutting out the noise of your head. Teresa of Avila said, settle yourself in solitude and you will come upon God in yourself. Silence needs to be part of the rhythm of our lives. Time and time again, scripture tells us that Jesus found a quiet place to pray. We all need those times when we can step back from the hustle and bustle of daily life. We need time to quiet our thoughts and listen. Often it can be as simple as a breath prayer. So I invite you to try one with me today. Sit comfortably in your pew or in your couch at home and take a deep breath in and let go of it. And take another breath in and let go of it. And continue to breathe in and breathe out. And as you breathe in, breathe in God's love. And as you let go of that breath, let go of the anger or the hurt that lives within you. And breathe in God's love again. And let go of that anger and that hurt. Breathe in God's grace and forgiveness and let go of jealousy and resentment as you breathe out. And breathe in that grace again and let it wash over you and let go of those things that hold you back. Focusing on your breath, continue to take a couple deep breaths. Everything else pushes out of your mind until you are able to relax and even lean into the silence. In silence, may our souls thirst for God. And when you are ready, open your eyes and come back. Only took a couple minutes. And yet, it quiets us in that silence. It is when we center our lives on God with every breath that we take, we discover that God is our refuge, our rock, our strength, our salvation, our abiding place, as the psalmist says. Once we have found that silence, we must be willing to open ourselves to God. Silence is more than just the absence of noise. It is the willingness to listen, to use our ears, our hands, our feet, our heart, to listen to what God is saying to us and allow God to direct us. Listening is not passive, but active, as we seek to hear what God is saying to us opening our ears and our hearts, our lives, that God may speak to us. Listening to God means taking time to be silent. It means opening ourselves up to God. As God speaks to us, we must do more than just listen. We are called to accept and to act, to take action, to allow that to shape us and change us and mold our lives, to change us. You can go to the top doctors in the world and get the best medical advice, but it doesn't do any good if you don't take that advice. And so we are called to act, 
to take action upon that which we hear. Remember Robert Frost's poem, Two roads diverge in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Which road will you take? Will it make a difference? How can you put into action that which God is saying to you? I just learned one new way this morning, that March 20th is, Dr. Roger, is Mr. Rogers' Day, and to take time to act in our neighborhood. It may be my children's sermon next week. As I watch the news each evening, I'm struck with how many people in Poland and Europe have found ways, creative ways, of putting their faith into action to welcome refugees. There are stories of strollers lined up at the train station, packed with diapers and clothes for those fr fleeing the Ukraine. There are stories of people from Denmark with signs saying how many strangers they can take into their home and welcome. Stories of ex-military here in the U.S. who have gone over to Ukraine to join in the fighting. They challenge us to do more than just listen to the news, reminding us that we are called to act. For many, it may be as simple as praying or donations to the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance. And I will say that as nice as it feels to collect goods, the best way to give is money because we don't have to spend any money getting it over there. And so many times the best way to give is through the church because our Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, through our per capita, we pay for the salary of those who administer it. So it all goes to those in need, and we work with agencies on the ground that are familiar. One of my disciplines is I'm a quilter, and so I do crafty, creative things. I made hearts of blue and yellow to remind me to pray for, for Ukraine. And so we are called to act. All of this takes place in the context of relationship. It is as we establish a relationship with the living God that we learn to recognize God's voice. In John 10, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Without even using caller ID. You know, we have these phones now that tell us who's calling before we go very far. We know who it is when we pick up the phone and answer it most of the time. Jesus says, my sheep recognize my voice, and they know me. The more time we spend with Christ, the deeper our relationship, the more likely we are to recognize his voice. Christ still speaks to us today through visions of where we see God, as you saw on the hearts last time I was here, through other people, through scripture, God is still speaking to us. Remember the words of what a friend we have in Jesus? And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. That's a relationship. It is when we put these things together, silence, openness, action, and relationship that we learn to listen to God, not only with our ears, but with our hands, our feet, our body, our hearts. Silenceness, silence, openness, action, and relationship. Four simple words, but they create an acronym. S-O-A-R. Soar. When we truly listen to God, we are able to soar, to rise up and be all that we were meant to be. Let us take time to listen. Listen to God in our midst, because God is here. Let us listen with our hands, our hearts, our bodies, our ears, 
with all that we do and all that we are. In the silence, let us be open. Let us move into action because we have a relationship with the living God who is speaking to us and who invites us to soar. Will you pray with me? God of grace and love, you still speak to us in so many ways. Open our ears that we may hear you. Open our hearts that we may be open to you. Open our lives that we may be transformed into action. For we have a relationship with the living God in all that we do and all that we are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand in body and or spirit as you are able, as we bear witness to our faith using the response to the word, the affirmation of faith that is in your bulletin. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. We believe that unity is therefore both a gift and an obligation for the Church of Jesus Christ. We believe that through the working of God's Spirit, it is a binding force, yet simultaneously a reality, which must be earnestly pursued and sought one which people of God must commune You may be seated. As we come to prayer, I want to read one thing to you that I saw on Facebook posted by a friend of mine because it taught me to think about things differently. She said, today I found myself complaining about the rising cost of fuel. And then I remembered I had never run from missiles. I worried if I needed to stock up on a few staples. And then I realized I never had to send my children to school with their blood type taped to their backs. I shook my head and thought of young men and women headed overseas and then remembered that for the Ukrainians, war showed up on their doorstep. Then I decided I won't sit in my house in suburbia and brood over a downward turn of the stock market while people are literally facing death. Instead, I'm going to pray. I know that God will hear from heaven God will lean down and listen when I pray. The Bible tells me that. I'm going to pray that good will overcome evil, that it would happen sooner rather than later. I'm going to pray that God would hear the cry of every lost soul facing a war they didn't want and come to their rescue. I'm praying for peace in every corner of the world tonight. Let's fill the air with our voices as we call out to our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. May God hear our prayers and turn this whole thing around. I just thought that was beautiful because it really reframed how I looked at the situation. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for the blessings that we have, even when they get crowded out by the problems that we live with. Yes, we know the real financial cost of this war that hits us. But pause and help us to understand the cost to people thousands of miles away as their lives are in danger. We give thanks for the many blessings we have. As we come to you, we give praise for Ruth and ask that you would be with her. 
We think of events in our world. We think of the fighting in the Ukraine. And we think of people in Russia who have no idea what their country is doing because their news is filtered and controlled by the government. We come before you with our laments, with our prayers for those going through difficult times. We place in your hands Marilyn, Arlene, Mylon, Mrs. Brown, Sebastian, Isalore, Nancy and her family, Jackie and her family, the Bezerab family, Jack, Jim, and Kimmy, Star and family, Josephine, Tom, Jill, Patty, and Scott, as he undergoes medical tests this week. For some of us, these are just names, but they are not just names to you. They are your beloved children, and you want nothing more than to bring healing to them. And so we pray that you would be with them that they may know your healing love and grace in each and every day, that they may know your touch, that they may find strength and courage for each new day that they may know that they are not alone, even in difficult times. For you are with us each and every day. Help us to see and to hear and to feel and know your presence, that it may guide us and center us and bring us hope each and every day. Hear us now as we boldly pray the prayer that Jesus taught all disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give not because God needs us to, but because we need to give. It is an act of faith, an act of commitment, as we bear witness to our faith in the living God. Today, our offering will be in the pews. Uh, the ushers will come forward with the plates. If you are worshiping with us online, you can go to the church's website and donate there, or you can mail a check to the church. Let us worship God with our gifts and offering. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we come before you with our gifts to bear witness to our faith, to show our love. Take these, our gifts, and use them to touch a broken world, to bring healing, to strengthen your church in this place and around the world. This we ask in the name of Christ our God. Amen. You know what? We forgot to sing after the scripture lesson. It was, no, it was on me. I just went right from one thing to another. You know, 
It's never out of time. Let's, let's sing Open Our Ears, that one verse that's there in the hearing of the word, and then we will go to our closing hymn. I don't know the number. Let's open our eyes in there. It's the first verse. We're going to sing Open Our Ears. When I was a child, well, in high school youth group, we used to have what we called sword drills. Who could find that verse fastest? <laughs> so open our ears, and I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able, and let us sing that verse, and then we will go to hymn 453. just as well after the sermon as before. <laughs> Let us join together in singing Open Our Ears, O Faithful People, hymn number 453. As you go forth from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be before you to guide you, behind you to justify you, above you to bless you, and within you to refresh you, now and forevermore, in the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Amen.